It is a beautiful sunset tonight. And I'm just now getting to my Bible reading because it's been a busy day. Good evening, you guys. Um, today got kind of busy. I'm fresh out of the bath. <laughs> and I'm not gonna forget that we need to do our readings. Okay, so today we're reading Nehemiah chapter nine. On the 24th day of the same month, the Israelites gathered together, fasting and wearing sackcloth and having dust on their head. Those of the Israelites' descendants had separated, had separated themselves from all foreigners. They stood in their places and confessed their sins and the wickedness of their fathers. They stood where they were and read from the book of the law and the Lord their God for a quarter of the day and spent another quarter in confession and in worshiping the Lord their God. Standing on the stairs were the Levites, Yeshua, okay, the Levites. <laughs> Stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessings and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens and even the highest heavens, and all their starry hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur and the Chaldeans and named him Abraham. You found his heart faithful to you and you made a covenant with him to give to his descendants the land of the Canaanites. You have kept your promise because you are righteous. You saw the sufferings of your forefathers in Egypt. You heard their cry at the Red Sea. You've set miraculous signs and wonders against Pharaoh, against all his officials and all the people of his land. For you knew how arrogantly the Egyptians treated them. You made a name for yourself, which remains to this day. You divided the sea before them so that they passed through it on dry ground. But you hurled their pursuers into the depths like a stone into mighty waters. By day you led them with a pillar of cloud and by night with a pillar of fire to give them light on the way they were to take. You came down to Mount Sinai, you spoke to them from heaven. You gave them regulations and laws that are just and right and decrees and commands that are good. You made known to them your holy Sabbath and gave them commands, decrees, and laws through your servant Moses. In their hunger, you gave them bread from heaven, and in their thirst, you brought them water from the rock. You told them to go in and take possession of the land you had sworn with uplifted hand to give them. But they, our forefathers, became arrogant and stiff-necked and did not obey your commands. They refused to listen and failed to remember the miracles you performed among them. They, they became stiff-necked and in their rebellion appointed a leader in order to return to their slavery. But you are passionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. Oh, praise the Lord that that's true. Therefore you did not desert them, even when they cast for themselves an image of a calf and said, this is your God who brought you up out of Egypt, or when they committed awful blasphemies. Because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the desert. By day, the pillar of the cloud did not cease to guide them on their path, nor the pillar by night to shine on the way they were to take. You gave your good spirit to instruct them. You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and you gave them water for their thirst. For 40 years, you sustained them in the desert, they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet become swollen. You gave them kingdoms and nations, allotting to them even the remotest frontiers. They took over the country of Sihon, king of Heshbon, and the country of Og, king of Bashan. 
You made their sons as numerous as the stars in the sky. And you brought them into the land that you told their forefathers to enter and possess. Their sons went in and took possession of the land. You subdued them before the Canaanites who lived in the land. You handed the Canaanites over to them, along with their kings and the peoples of the land, to deal with them as they pleased. They captured four fortified cities and fertile land. They took possession of houses filled with all kinds of good things. Wells already dug, vineyards, olive groves, and fruit trees in abundance. They ate to the full and were well nourished. They reveled in their great goodness. But they were disobedient and rebelled against you. They put their law behind their back, your law behind their back. They killed your prophets who had admonished them in order to turn them back to you. They committed awful blasphemies, so you handed them over to their enemies who oppressed them. But when they were oppressed, they cried out to you from heaven and heard, you heard them. And in, their great, in your great compassion, you gave them deliverers who rescued them from the hand of their enemies. But as soon as they were at rest, they again did what was, did what was evil in your sight. Then you abandoned them to the hand of their enemies so that they ruled over them. And when they cried out to you again, you heard from heaven and in compassion, you delivered them time after time. You warned them to return to your law, but they became arrogant and disobeyed your commands. They sinned against your ordinances by which a man will live if he obeys them. Stubbornly, they turned their backs on you, became stiff-necked and refused to listen. For many years, you were patient with them. By your spirit, you admonished them through your prophets. Yet they paid no attention, so you handed them over to, to the neighboring people. But in your great mercy, you did not put an end to them or abandon them, for you are a gracious and merciful God. Now, therefore, God, our God, the great and mighty and awesome God, keeps his covenant of love. Do not let all this hardship seem trifling in your eyes, the hardship that has come upon us, upon our kings and leaders, upon our priests and prophets, upon our fathers and all your people. For the days of the kings of Assyria until today, in all that has happened to us, you have been just. You have acted faithfully while we did wrong. Our kings, our leaders, our priests, and our fathers did not follow your law. They did not pay attention to your commands or the warning you gave them, even while they were in, the, in their kingdom, enjoying your great goodness to them in the in the spacious and fertile land you gave them, they did not serve you or turn from their evil ways. But see, we are slaves today, slaves in the land you gave our forefathers so they could eat fruit and the other good things in produce. Because of our sins, its, abund it's abundant harvest goes to the kings you have placed over us. They rule over our bodies and our cattle as they please. We are in great dis distress. In view of all this, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders and our Levites and our priests are affixing their seals to it. Woo! That's one of the longest chapters I've ever read in the Bible. Um, it is golden hour right now. That's why the lighting has gotten kind of orangey. Um, so this is a very, very rich chapter. And the one thing that stands out to me is our propensity to be like, help me, help me, I need help. And then help comes and we're like, good. And we're like back on track. And then we're like, okay, I got this. And then we, and then we're like rebelling and we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Um, we're not living by God's ways, you know, and then we get in trouble again and we cry out to him and it goes on and on. Okay. <laughs> the list goes on and on of how we do this as people. Um, but I think what's important to note is that God is so faithful and I've experienced this in my own life of you know, 
kind of ebbing and flowing and sometimes straight up not being right with God in my lifestyle or in my heart or, you know, my attitude. Um, but he is so faithful when we cry out for help. He, he never says no because we are his weakness. He loves us. And that's something that I have felt so strongly this year, especially um, there. I went through the dark night of the soul this year, which I'll share in another video. But there were times that I literally couldn't feel God and I couldn't feel love. And I knew that my choice had, had choices had taken me far from him. And these weren't choices like I didn't start, you know, living carnally you know like if you looked at my lifestyle you might still say like you know I wasn't actively doing something that would be like wrong in the sense of like I wasn't doing drugs I wasn't sleeping around I wasn't you know going out drinking or anything like that but my attitude my heart was distant you know my heart and my mind weren't in alignment with truth and and I have felt very distant and you know um it is amazing though when you reach out and cry out for help that he is right there he is so faithful oh that just really touched me um and but I also think another thing to note in this is that when we disobey, it's like, it says, you know, we're slaves in the land you gave us. Our promises become our bond, like we become slaves. We, like the people we, the things we defeated now defeat us, you know? So it's really, really important to stay obedient to the Lord. Um, and it's really important to stay faithful in our lifestyle and in our attitude and in worship to God. Um, but if you are far from him and you do find yourself feeling distant and needing help, cry out to him. He is there and he will answer you. And that's what this text shows me. God's faithfulness. He is the faithful one. Yeah. Okay, you guys. Um, thanks for listening and I'll see you again tomorrow.